Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> so welcome to uh, Small Town Times, Richard Fortan of RFP Media. This is uh, nice to be in Sweet 16 here. Here we are. This we is, made it. This is your baby. It's been, uh, it was overdue, but it uh, came out, uh, the doctor slapped the hell out of it, and it's crying, and it's uh, yeah, yeah. It's We're demanding just milk. There. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so thanks for doing this. Thanks for uh, being here and stepping in and trying stuff out. Well, it's, uh, I really do enjoy it myself. It's, uh, the learning curve is steep, but it's... Uh, uh, that's the only way you get fo- move forward, eh? Is like uh, find out how not to do it, and then mm-hmm. dive in and see what happens, and and uh, hopefully you're around good people who pick you up yeah, <laughs> when yeah. you fall, yeah, which has been the case for me in my life. So uh, me I, too. I keep risking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, well, uh, it's been a long road getting here. You had a big vision. It took a lot of uh, work, effort, blood, sweat, tears. Your dad was amazing in being able to. Uh, you know, coordinate finance and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you're on your launch point. How mm-hmm. exciting is that? It's super freaky. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. It, it's really, no, it's really exciting. Um, obviously, this has taken a couple years to manifest, but I think, you know, most things they say worth worth the time, you know, if it's big enough and important enough, you'll get through it. And so uh, I've gotten through the challenges of what it takes to, like, uh, bricks and mortar together and get a space going where you could do some proper post-production so that you could do proper media so that you can compete on a global stage. That was sort of the idea behind it. And now we're here and now it's like, I wonder if the talent will show up and this will actually be right and for the right time at the right place. And and now we're going to find out. Yeah, uh, well, you've been getting a good response so far. Tell me about some of the things that are making you excited. Yeah, it's awesome. Because of the investment that the college put into post-production facility and um, NOHFC is investing a lot uh, through their film uh, credits, um, there's a lot of buzz around North Bay, around these productions coming up north. And my thinking, this has been like years in the making, of course. Those tax credits started, I think, like 14, 15 years ago. I think it was Greg Cerbera that brought them in, you know. Um, was that right after the? Uh, yeah, that was a new. Yeah, that was the second. What were they cutting budget. to make that up? Well, it was that's when they were spending. The, you know, <laughs> the kidding. liberals were, were right into figuring out a way. Yeah. To. to yeah, well, they were greasing the wheel. Yeah, they're trying to create an industry in a place where that industry doesn't happen, and <clears throat> and there were, of course, they were doing the same thing in New Brunswick, and then New Brunswick cut the the program for one year, and all everything came out. A lot of people learned some lessons there on the risks of then taking that away. So it'll be interesting to see how this Ford government comes up with their formula to support the industry or not uh, up north. But basically, because of those investments, now there's these green lit projects for Northern Ontario and these productions are coming to town and are creating jobs. Uh, But at the same time, like, do the jobs stay? Like, do we know any better how to create a world-class production, us locals here working uh, based on this activity? And I guess what I realize is you need a place to do the work and and learn, you know, build a team around a place. And and that's what this is about. It's about creating a, a room where you could do the work. And then when these guys come to town, hopefully that's of service. That's the big question. Will they, will this, will this uh, serve uh, their needs? And uh, yeah, I'm hearing that maybe there's possibilities that it will serve their needs. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out in the next few few seasons, you know. The other part of the equation is building up the capacity in town with the people, the skills, the sound, the video, the editing. And uh, tell me about how this is uh, becoming a place for people to test out where they're at, measure where they are, and uh, find out where they have to go. Well, exactly. Um, uh, this place has offered people to walk in and say, oh, see the possibility of uh, doing this in a professional context, like yeah. for a job as... But at the same time, everybody can be a video editor and a sound editor these days in their basement and have their home studio, right? That's just the reality of the world now. It's why it's accessible to everybody and inspiring a lot of people to start that YouTube channel or that podcast, um, which is great. But then to have to pay 
by the hour and and really figure out the mechanics of, of how to pull that stuff together is a whole other step. But this this is how we learn how to take those steps is by doing it, figuring it out, and creating a space where we can collaborate. That's sort of why the design of what I'm doing with RFP Media is to be a co-working editor's space. It's not meant to just close the door and be alone. It's meant to be a little bit more open. And then you have the closed space to do the sound work, uh, the room we're in right now, you know. But it's part of a co-working community, so now you can do meetings in the ca in the cafe. You can do. You're part of. A, there's an art collective next door. You could be building props or your art department. People could be playing around. You can have meetings, production meetings in the in the meeting space. So to be part of that bigger thing might be interesting to somebody coming to town and needing a uh, facility to kind of get the work done. And for local guys that uh, are just coming up and wanting to do econo model of a podcast like I am, uh, the opportunities here for locals to uh, join the NRCC like I did, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, gives me a little bit of extra access to uh, some equipment that I don't have. I'm trying to set up my stuff at home as well, mm -hmm. but uh, to have this collaborative uh, environment here and also... Uh, 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 some support and uh, a place to have meetings with people that I'm, and uh, well, it's a little bit nicer to invite them here for an interview than uh, the uh, ever-evolving hacienda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there, yeah, and and that's the idea, right? Yeah. Um, and you can do both. Yeah. If you don't have to uh, uh, pay insane amounts uh, and risk it all to be in one place, you can try doing both. And there is something to be said about the network that's created when you start hanging out with uh, like-minded creators yeah. in any medium. Yeah. So by having artists, visual artists nearby and makers around, mm -hmm. and then now digital artists having a space to like uh, bring their skills to the table. Who knows what we'll be able to launch out of here, you know, moving forward. It'll really depend on who comes in and, and what they want to do. But it offers a new platform for North Bay. There mm -hmm. isn't anything quite like this. So we'll see we'll see how that how that works. I actually think there'll be quite a few more versions of this popping up everywhere because it's inevitable in the information age that we get better at communicating. Well, then it'll just come down to the service that each place will offer, um, and, and the team, the teams of people, like like the editor matters. You know, the 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 technician matters. So at the end of the day, it's like any business. What kind of team do you get? The Dave Dale when you walk in here and you say, "Yeah, I just want to record a podcast, and I've got this idea." What kind of team can we build that collaborates to really take mm -hmm. your vision? and actualize it and maybe even bigger than you ever imagined or better, you know? And so that'll be the question. How do I re use what the college is doing and bringing people in? There's like close to 30 post-production students a year now, theoretically, mm -hmm. that are graduating and need a job. Who in town is going to create a production company that hires 15 of those or 10 of those or five of those? You know, how do we keep people in? And... Um, that's the essence of what I'm trying to, you know, build. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a company that could handle some of that. Well, I see a lot of different little companies hiring a bunch of little people for short periods of time, which is, I don't know, I always look at that level because that's where a lot of the capacity is built. And sometimes uh, um, these production companies, you need to have experience under your belt and you need to you know, pay some dues before you, you walk in their door because they don't necessarily have the time for these production projects to have anybody, too many of them on the job training. Even if you're at a certain level, you got your diploma, you got skills, you're, you're talented, you still, that's a different league, right? So exactly. to get to that league, you got to be in the minors. And it's, it's a developmental process, just like the battalion, just like the, every other sport, uh, in town, you you you, uh, you can't just jump on a team and be productive. That's a really really good way to think about it, and I think it's totally right. Yeah. So so I'm like minor league, 
you know, Junior B. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to figure out how the mics work. Yeah, we're trying yeah. to figure out how to get everything right, how to sync cameras. You know, it starts at the beginning. But, um, but I think because the industry is now here, because of these tax credits, we can, we can grow fast with the right partner. So really what RFP Media is doing, RFP, a request for proposals, what's, you know, who wants to partner, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm here. I love, I, I want to live in North Bay most of the year (laughs) but be based in north bay definitely um it's a great place great place it's an amazing place to be so um you know if to get the jobs that like adr is really what people are saying this room is about which is doing the voiceover work and Mm -hmm. but for audiobooks and podcast that's exactly what you know what i was hoping that this this would work out so now with the right partner uh, from the right place, I think um, we could do world-class ADR and be handling post-production from anywhere in the world, not just the productions that 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 are getting a grant here in Northern Ontario, mm-hmm. but like uh, really creating the jobs of the future. I well, think. there's a lot of talented people in the business that are already here in North Bay and already have their networks and their connections and. I think uh, as they trickle in and use it from whenever it suits them and it just comes in handy, uh, the word will get out. And, uh, you know, you get that one <clears throat> really good whale that comes in here and books it and then raises the level uh, above what this is because they, they can show you more Oh, that's more. what I'm, that's, yeah. yeah, that's what I've got my fingers crossed for, you know. Yeah. Somebody who could step into what I've been able to get to this point and really uh, help me finish the job and offer uh, a, a service that's world class, you know. Kind of yeah. like, you know, uh, the Rams getting it in the red, <laughs> getting it into the red zone. You just needed someone to come along to help you score that touchdown, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's a vital role uh, well, that yeah. not everybody can yeah. uh, can accomplish. It's quite a skill. So yeah, A field goal kicker might just win it for you. you got to be in the game. Yeah. you got to be in the game. And that's what, you know, all the entrepreneurial stuff you hear about, they say, like, you got to take risks. you got to try and at the end of the day, you know, you don't know, but here I am trying uh, the best I can to offer something that I see in the next 20, 30 years needing a lot of attention, like how we master uh, the technology to communicate appropriately online, you know. Uh, I don't see that problem or that solution going anywhere over time. So it's just a process of how do we do this better all the time and build a team that can really like uh, help us grow. And, uh, you know, it's been inspiring to see what you're doing, Dave, because you're doing it. You're, you're, you're taking the swings. You're, you know, you really are. And, and I think you're going to inspire a lot of people to do it as well. So it'll be fun to see where this small town times things goes. I predict um, it might, you know, go very, very far. Well, uh, I hope it does. Uh, I know I'm just getting in there, taking my hacks and uh, trying to learn as I go. And uh, I'm not afraid to do that. I've done it for a long time. Uh, Some people might be afraid to just do it before they're ready. And maybe I should uh, prepare more than I do, but uh, more about doing and and seeing what happens after that. I, uh, so it's great that you guys are here for me to, you know, have a place to step up to the plate and and get it going. I'm not, uh, it's a long-term vision, like uh, all this early work. I, mm. I just want to keep, uh, keep building, stay relevant, keep the name out there, let people know I want to do something, and maybe... Uh, Maybe the right partner will come along and uh, say that, uh, yeah, you know, that there's something there. Uh, Dave Dale can interview some people and uh, make a different type of show. And that's what I'm looking for, my type of show, my personality, uh, but interesting people and t- let them tell their stories. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. So yeah. tell me a little bit more about uh, your yourself there, Richard. You've uh, had a, a windy path to get to this point. Um, uh, university. Western Ontario, the University of Western Ontario kind of unlocked my, when I look back, I'm 38 years old, left North Bay at 19 out of Algonquin, mm-hmm. l'école secondaire Algonquin, catholic Algonquin now, but back then Algonquin, and um, 
Moved to North Bay. I was 11. Love North Bay. Sorry to yeah. interrupt, but yeah. 50th anniversary, I think, yeah, for the school. Yeah, big year for the school. It's going to be all sorts of activities in May. Uh, it's it's going to be great. Actually, I'm looking forward to it. It should be fun. So much history out of that school. Interesting people. Yeah. Like amazing alumni, actually. World-renowned even. Some, of course, hockey players. <laughs> there was a football player. A football player now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he didn't graduate from there, but he's... Uh, uh, Ryan Hunter carries the yeah. Algonquin uh, memories and experience uh, with him wherever he goes, and now he's a Kansas City Chiefs. You know, he was almost on the team in the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's wow. cool. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, Algonquin High School, amazing experience, mm-hmm. music, uh, great high school experience. And then I decided to go to study business at Western because I wanted to learn the language of the devil at the time. I'd gone down. Maybe that was too much. <laughs> but, yeah, like, but, but really, uh, yeah. it's true. I wanted to learn the business lingo the only, because I always it, felt an only... artist, an artist. I mean, they can't help it. They're an artist. But the, the business, that's just the language you need to learn. Um, but I ended up, you know, getting through the business degree. I got a, a bachelor in administrative and commercial studies. But really, I really liked sociology and psychology and philosophy, like philosophy and so I had sociology in there, of course. But I met people. You know, it's not what I can't remember a thing I learned at Western, but I met people that brought me to my first job out of university that led me to a whole network that then you know, led to a, a a time working in politics, in Ontario politics, that I never studied political science or had political ambition or um, knew I was even in that political party, you know, by choice. It was more I fell into it, but it, it just, it gave me so many opportunities to see the world from a different perspective that then... I'm now getting to, you know, apply some of those lessons in in my life through this studio. Sociology and psychology is a love. Business is a background. That's perfect for being a backroom political hack. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know how it all how it all worked, but um, I enjoyed my time working in, in liberal uh, politics for ministers and premiers. Oh yeah. Yeah. it was a real privilege, and I knew that, and I enjoyed every second. And I also knew that I didn't want to stay there. Uh, for I didn't want to be like a career political hack. It was just like a neat place to learn a heck of a lot during a time. And then I always knew I wanted to, you know, be my own boss. I didn't know how, still don't, but... You know, that's what this journey has been about, is trying to build a company, trying to build a business. And um, that hasn't been as easy as I thought it would be. <laughs> now I no, know why the stats are what they are, you know? Oh, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. I, it's not one of my strong suits either, you know? It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. More of a visionary. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, so the journey Western brought me uh, to Deb Matthews, who brought me into politics. And then I worked for the premier, both McGinty and then Wynn, Wynn when she was in education. I left McGinty's office to go work for Wynn. So that was a really interesting perspective because usually you don't go that way. Exactly but, what date did you leave McGinty's office? <laughs> yeah, before the scandal. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Well, there was a few scandals, so it depends which, which one. one. Yeah. Uh, but not scandals. It was just um, it was an interesting. I, I had really interesting timing, actually. Um, before and, the before the first started flying. Well, I, put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, so that when I left politics, I ended up really being. I was really interested in yoga, meditation, and like how would one if they had every opportunity in the world as I felt in some ways I had Um, because I wasn't uh, afraid to seize my life because of my brother's journey had shown me that why fear yeah it's gonna be it's a short time might as well have a good time and and live life Patrick for life yeah exactly Um, so when I left after we won a government I was part of and I had run a campaign um, and then you get back to Toronto to sign up for the next four years I was just happy to go step aside and try what Buddha did and just go sit in the woods alone and see how that would be and bring your books and catch up on sleep and 
Um, cause I had been really in the rat race, but knowing that it was going to be for a short time and that I w- wanted to do this. So I got rid of everything. I became pretty minimalist and I remember always talked about going back to the woods and doing the Henry David Thoreau, like Walden's pond. Let's go see what would happen if you just did it thing. So I did it. And then, but that lasted until like 11 months. And then I had the epiphany out there that, yeah, I want to be in North Bay, not knowing exactly where I would land, but that I wanted to base it close to my family, whatever it was going to be that I would try to, you know, play in the, in society, right? Make, build something, illusion, but something. Yeah. <laughs> and like is something. It, like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Show business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The grand illusion. Yeah. Don't tell How me. do you create Don't tell me. Show the me. grand illusion yeah. uh, through the TV screen? You know, this is a good start. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, so that's what happened. So now here we are, five years later, of trying to, and always knew I wanted to go into communications because I always had a fantasy of working in films and in music. Music's been really impactful in my life to to help me. So I always wanted to be part of the magic of making music. And then you look at like how they live with their bus and you get to go from town to town, pick up a bag of money and go to the next time and, and inspire people and people are happy to see you. And then you come home and make music. So I always thought I got to do what Neil Young did, but instead of in California, do it in Northern Ontario. You hmm. know, like by have have. The... Are you that talented? I'm. I, I haven't seen you play. No, I'm not very talented at all. But have you heard Neil Young sing? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good point. <laughs> it's, it's not like it's you know it's 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 just finding that resonation with your uh, fan, finding find your niche. But it's the but it's making art. Yeah. Like Neil Young doesn't care that you don't think he sings well. And yeah. maybe he doesn't sing as well as Sarah McLaughlin or some other random beautiful voice that is maybe more angelic, but what he's singing about and who he is yeah. and how he puts it out and the fact that he's with those guys at that time and he can just plug in and play mm-hmm. and he's there and he's alive and he's like, that's what Neil Young is. You have to be if you're going to live that type of life. You mm-hmm. know? And, and so I think life is an art you know uh, so I don't know if uh, I'm as I'll be as successful as Neil Young commercially in terms of what he's done but I think it's impossible to compare no you know I was born into my way of creating my art which is now in a space where I have the lab to to make it to, to make it what I'm seeing and it's taken me a while to like uh, actualize that voice yeah. but I think when it comes out it'll be it'll feel really good for me to share what I've been wanting to say I'm, well, I'm looking you, forward to it <laughs> well you, you can find success that way you might also find success as uh, building up businesses right well, exactly I don't know how it's going to be but like the reason I look so tired one of the reasons I look so tired is because I was here last night late with a friend who I've been working on music with for years and Again, there's like this amazing thing that happens because we've had to let go of projects and then come we come back to them and you you figure out how to work with people, not in your fantasy of how it ought to be and I'm something, but in, the, in actual, you know, relationship. And to make music, you're li- you have to listen and you have to open yourself to, to who you're doing that with, you know. So to see that happening, for mm-hmm. me to be tired here this morning on Monday morning doing a podcast, which is a dream come true with you, and you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. all a great. But then to be tired because I was hanging out all night doing well, that's the- art, like my, my own, it's like, wow, here we are. That's the right kind of tired. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, get used to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank yeah. you. So, um, can I give you more of the path though? That, that's oh, please. We haven't finished. Yeah. Well, so what happened when I went to the woods and I had the epiphany that I wanted to be close to family instead of running off? And because I feel like any up, op- you know, I can. I didn't have a mortgage. I didn't have a wife. I didn't have kids, or debt. So you could do anything. But really what I wanted to do is sit at dinner across from my mother and my heart rate not not go up too high. And same with my dad and my sister and the people that I love so much and get to know them. 
and that's taken a lot of time. That's taken this five years for us to, I mean, we're, my family's everything to me. So it's really in the long term, I will never look back at the, the uh, trials and tribulations of creating this um, as anything but a gift because it's allowed us the time to like, as a family, um, really get close. And now I'm involved in my dad's projects, you know, despite myself. And it's fun, and it's fun, you know, and I think he's having fun too. And oh, he's done an amazing job with this. Oh, I know. And to watch him work, like, to watch how uh, consistent and um, uh, determined he is in what he does, you know, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot from him. And my mom. My mom, of course, is uh, the backbone of it all. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, so it's great. And my sister and I are, like, I just love my sister to bits. Of course, my little nephew, Patrick, is, like, my, you know, just, I didn't even know love like that was possible, you know? Like, it's amazing how how nice uh, that's been for me to be close to instead of being somewhere else trying to change the world. Just sit at my own dinner table like we did last night and, like, wow. We're, we're, we're together. There's always challenges, but we're together. You'll probably find that uh, your, your little nephew and being part of his life and helping him getting uh, shaped as a human being and moving forward is going to change the world more than anything you can do. Singularly, I, I right? feel that. Yeah. I feel that, yeah. And I think that it's this, it's that old teaching, right? Seven generations. Like imagine if we did things today, mm. thinking of the long term. You talked about a long term vision for small town times. It's a long term vision for me here too, because you're right. It, really, this will just be a tool for somebody else to walk into to do things that are in, unimaginable to me. You know, much like this is probably unimaginable to my grandfather, for what. What, what I'm able to do now. Mm -hmm. But it carries that same loving spirit, you know, I think, which is why I think it'll work, you know, because people like you will feel that and say, hey, I want to help this poor guy out. <laughs> I want to help this poor guy out because he's, he means well. Well, there's that. I want to help you out because that helps me out. Uh, helping other people helps you. Like if people and and doing things and getting other people to help you helps you, you know, accepting other people's help. It's, uh, it's a hard thing to do for a lot of people to, uh, most of us uh, that are, you know, as pushy and, uh, uh, as I am, uh, want to do things on their own cause it's just easier that way. And we just put pull forward and, you know, put it in four wheel and push. But, um, it actually, the best growth we have, uh, and I say we, people like me, or whatever that is, is that uh, when we allow others to be part and part of what we're doing, it's uh, it's uh, hard to do actually sometimes, but it it allows you to grow further than you can on your own most of the time. So that's cool. So helping you helps very, me, and you helping yeah. me helps you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you're very well spoken, Dave. You say you're not a video guy, but I see you becoming a video guy. Well, you can you know. just rhyme that stuff off. You know, you got it. You got. I think there's a lot that you can say, uh, not just through your written word, uh, but just like that. That yeah. you know, I think that's why it'll work for small town times. Well, you I'm, wor I'm to working it. towards that. If I could learn to speak like I write, it comes a much more comfortable writing because you can go through it and edit it proof it you know smooth it out uh, change uh, transitions you can you can actually nobody sees the product until you're finished really and uh, speaking well, I was I had a hard time I had uh, I was tongue-tied as a kid so uh, that was like uh, tough to get through but I think if I get my rest and I practice speaking and, and have a thoughts and preparation before I start, I'm going to get better at it. It's just uh, it's something I'm going to have to practice a lot to get that way, just like the writing. The writing didn't come. It, it took years, years of learning what my voice was when I'm writing. I think it's the same thing with this. I'm going to have to find my voice 
uh, even though I don't like hearing it in these things. <laughs> I know. Well, that's funny we're talking about it because we were just before, as we're yeah. putting these things on, Dave's saying, oh, I don't want to hear it. But I think it's good that you hear because we really hear what's being picked up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sensitive. Like, it's so like it, much louder. It picks up my beard scratching. Picking, it picks up when I knock yeah, this. Yeah. It, when I put the, the cop down and the, the bottle yeah. down. But also it picks up a, a truth an energy, like I, I heard once that uh, radio is still one of the most, or voice is one of the most effective ways that humans hear, like that humans absorb hmm. what's yeah. coming their way, sometimes even more than written because of the emotional, well, there's the an emotional, there's, it, it, we learn how to hear before we learn how to read, for example, right? Oh, that's funny. That was on the other side. Um, so then, uh, yeah, we learn how to hear, right? Okay. Before we learn how to read. So there's there's something that, that it does to us. There's a comfort in learning through voice. I did, read, I did read once about how uh, our ability to hear tone and distinguish between uh, uh, what might kill us and... and when someone's getting aggravated and whatnot came before speech. So our heart listens and before, before our ears did, really, uh, because it's a survival uh, skill. So no doubt that when we're talking and people hear our tones, you know, when I'm interviewing somebody or from their tone of their voice, I can tell they're lying. I can tell where they're nervous, right. where, where, where they're going. It's very it's more intimate. It's more intimate. And then, and then our, and then our eyes develop the ability to pick up all the cues that we need to differentiate between uh, someone lying or not, or understanding at least the honest sort of projection what they're trying to communicate. So the combination of yours and your eyes, and I think that's why podcasts are very popular. Um, because you can see whether somebody's selling you something or whether they're just being themselves. I, I know my, my boy looked at one of my podcasts and he said, uh, you might not want to have that camera in front of you because you're playing to it. I can tell, right? Mm. And he said, it'd just be easier if I did something like this where I'm just talking to somebody and not actually performing, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. uh, good advice. Mm -hmm. right? Says because uh, he can read me probably better than anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that was good. That was yeah. good. So that's the trick, though, isn't it? The authenticity and the feeling of I think it is connection is just when we let our guard down a little bit to be ourselves. You know, to not have the editing time of uh, being able to craft the message just perfectly by design, but to let Dave Dale kind of be revealed a little bit his true wit yeah. and humor of the moment because I that's how I know you as being, you know. It's a little different, yeah, knowing me the outside boy in my writing, right? Because right. I wouldn't mind reading some of my columns in the voice I had when I wrote them because I, I think actually uh, a lot of times people didn't know me well enough to pick up from my written cues and read between the lines uh, and to hear when I was just being sarcastic or whether I was being serious and I, I know for a fact so a lot of people thought I was writing angrily and uh, couldn't be further from the truth most of the time because I was just, even when I was giving somebody a blast, I was enjoying it and having a good time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And there was a little bit, maybe if someone was, you know, the subject of my ire was actually with me when I was doing it, they'd actually get an idea that I wasn't trying to rip their soul out. I was just giving them a little tap on the rear end, you know, kind of thing. Now you'll be able to do that. Yeah. No, so that's where I'm heading. Mm -hmm. And you're heading here, and it's all going to grow exponentially in 2019. What a big year it's going to be. I think it's going to be a good year. Yeah. Stay healthy, have fun. That's what Dermot keeps saying. We're having fun. Yeah, we gotta, <laughs> this we is the fun part. having fun, right? Yeah, this and is I'm the like, fun. I'm like, the mixer won't work with the software. The, the, I don't know how to run this. This isn't fun. Are you kidding me? Why can't it just work? Oh, it doesn't work. Shit. Okay, let me figure out. Okay. This is fun, right? <laughs> 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 yes, Dermot, we're having fun, baby. Uh, I, I had a day last week where not one technical thing turned out, right? Nothing yeah. was working my way. Every time I jumped on a, 
a computer, every time I tried to use my phone, every time I tried to process a video or something, there was just one piece of mm -hmm. heaping, steaming pile of <laughs> after another. Yeah, I just... After that day, I just, I'm going to try again tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's all we can do. Yeah, I'm just going to try again tomorrow. Yeah, set the process, try again. Um, and, and yeah, and here we grow. Yeah. We're, it'll be fun. Thanks for taking time to come in again and trying again. Thank you. Thank you for being on my show in your <laughs> studio. <laughs>